Hello friends and welcome back to our fast API tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, which is going to be uh, the penultimate video, number 32 in the series, I will touch on metadata and docs URLs. Now very briefly for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, the word that I just used, penultimate, that means this is the second to last video in the series. Uh, in the next one I will be uh, just kind of tying up some loose ends, talking about static files, testing, debugging, just a couple small little things, but this is, uh, we're, we're kind of almost done with this series now. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I, you'll see something a little new. Um, I, I'm trying out GitHub Copilot since it's going to be a paid service. I figured I would give it a shot for, for a hot second, see if it works. So some stuff might pop up that you're not used to. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. So Let's get going. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a description. So we're going to use doc strings for um, the uh, for the actual description here. Chimichong app helps you do awesome stuff. Svut stuff, and then. In the docs right here, which you can't see because I'm not showing it, but there's a little rocket ship, which I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm not a fan of emojis and things like that, only because it seems like it's more trouble than it's worth to add them in there. Like, you gotta find it, you gotta copy paste. There's no, at least from what I can tell, there's no um, easy keyboard shortcuts for these things, although there might be, and I'm just, you know, I'm an old fogey, but whatever. Next. Nope, not double at items. You can read items. And in case you can't tell, this is all marked down. Users, you will be able to, and then here, create users, not implemented. And read users also not implemented. Okay, so great. We've got some sort of description about our app that, that we've got going here. Now, how are we gonna actually use it? So let's go ahead and, so what I'm gonna do, we've been using this same app um, in, instance up here. I'm gonna comment this out because this is where we're gonna actually um, put a lot of this sort of stuff. So we're gonna say app equals fast API and then title equals chimmy chong app. Description equals description, excuse me. And we'll say version equals 0.0.1. Great. Um, okay, save. Okay, now, um, what do we do? So let's, do I have it running? Yes, I have it running. Good, we're up and running. Let's refresh the page. We've got a little bit of information here. See? We can see we've got the information about the uh, the title and the version number. If we were to change this to version 0.0.2 and we refresh the page, 0.0.2. Okay. Um, let's add in just a quick little route as well. Let's see if uh, GitHub Copilot will recognize it. Come on. Come on. Let's see. So this is, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of GitHub Copilot, uh, specifically when it comes to um, uh, PyCharm. I'm going to close this out and let's see uh, if I, if I reopen it, um, what it will do. PyCharm is opening, trust me. So now it's reopen. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's bring this in just a little bit. And now let's check GitHub Copilot. Refresh. <laughs> I might have to try this in VS Code. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, or maybe I just don't use GitHub Copilot, which is fine because I don't need to spend an extra $100 per year on yet another thing. 
I was just talking to my wife about canceling Netflix, but instead I'm going to pay for GitHub Copilot. Yeah, this is, it's just, it's, maybe it's just gonna, I have a lot going on on my computer, who knows. Now, async def, come on, come on Copilot. Let's see if you can do it. Nope. Async def read items, that's not bad. You gonna do anything for me? Come on. No. Return name Katana, if I can spell. Save it. Refresh our page. Oh, we're not running because I closed PyCharm. And let's refresh the page now and I'll close this up. There we go. So we try this out, execute, we get name Katana. Great, we're good. But you can see we got all this information up here, okay? So let's add a, bit, a, little, a little bit more to um, just the, the actual app itself. So we're gonna say terms of service is going to be HTTP example.com slash terms. Now I'm curious, I've not actually tried this and you can see I've got um, black is actually running now so I don't have to manually do it, which is nice. <laughs> Um, I kind of got all this set up for uh, the next series I'm doing. I'm doing uh, user authentication with email and everything like that in um, in Fast API. So I want to get things like iSort and MyPy up and running. So let's check the terms of service. Hey, it actually does have something here, which is nice. Okay, cool. Uh, next, contact is going to be, we'll do a dict because that's, I, I prefer just a dictionary object. Name equals Deadpoolio the Amazing. I wonder if Sebastian just kind of got bored towards the end of uh, writing docs for some of this stuff. HTTP colon slash slash xforce.example.com contact. And we will say email equals Deadpool at xforce.example.com. Refresh. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Whatever, it's fine. Send an email to Deadpoolio the Amazing, which is nice. It gives you that. Um, and then let's say license info equals dictionary, name equals Apache 2.0, and URL equals HTTPS www.apache.org, licenses, license 2.0.html okay now we refresh our page and we have all this great information and you can see it opens in a new page already um good good we're good we've got that okay next thing next thing next thing next thing let's touch on um uh metadata for tags so um in, in case you you don't recall, um, we can have different tags for our different routes. So here we're gonna add tags equals items. Um, and we will do uh, dict name equals wand and dict name equals flying broom. And then we're also gonna do app.get users tags equals users. Let's see if GitHub Copilot, five, four, three, two, one. You're dead to me, GitHub Copilot. Async def, get users, return, dict name equals Harry. What do you think the other name is gonna be? Dict name equals Ron, save. Okay, um, now if we go back into here and we refresh our page, you can see we have the tags here, users and items. Okay, That's, this is just as a refresher, this is how you can organize your, um, either your kind of your sub apps or your individual routes or, you know, whatever, however you wanna organize it, this is how you do that. Okay, now what we're gonna do though, is we're going to add in some uh, tags metadata tags metadata equals 
predict name equals users. So we want to add metadata for our users tag. Description equals operations with users. The login logic is also here. Save, it will reformat using our handy dandy reformatter. Let's do another one, dict name equals items. Um, description equals manage items. So fancy again, markdown, they have their own docs. And we will add in one more, um, external docs equals dict, description equals items external docs. And I am going to veer away from what Sebastian did equals HTTPS www.jvp.design instead of the fast API URL, I'm going to add in my own. Okay, so we go to items and it's not there. Why isn't it there? You may be asking. Well, simply because I forgot to include it in the actual instantiation of fast API. So let's add it in. Open API tags equals tags metadata. Now we, we, we will refresh the page. You can see we have some metadata here. You can use markdown for it, operations with users. The login logic is also here. Items, fancy, and you get this link right there. Okay, again, using markdown, it's all, it's all fantastic stuff. Um, so this is kind of it for the metadata. Um, one other thing that, that will, um, that I'll add, I don't know where I want to do it. Uh, let me just add it here. Open API URL equals, we'll say API v1 open API.json. JSON, not Jason, JSON. That's how I pronounce it. And you watch enough of my videos where I talk about it, that's how you will pronounce it as well. Okay, API v1 open API.json. JSON. See, I, I did it. I just did it. I was so mad at myself. I screwed myself up. Okay. Um, I don't think I have the, uh, the, the extension in incognito mode that will actually make this look pretty. I don't even know if I have it regular because this is Chrome and I don't usually use Chrome. Um, I'm going to pause it and add this really quickly. Okay, so we're back up. I've got it installed. Um, I'm going to pull up the... I'm going to show you the extension that I that I just grabbed. It's JSON formatter. Um, manage extension. I'm going to where is it? View in Chrome Web Store. Let's see if I can pull it open right here. This one, JSON formatter by CallumLock.com. So now it looks a little bit better. So this is the open API uh, JSON file. This has the schema for our entire app that we have right here, uh, which is very, very nice using that, uh, that endpoint. Um, and then the last thing that we're gonna do, um, or that I'm going to do on this video. So if we look at dot or slash docs, um, we can see our, you know, our, our testing thing right here, not testing, but you know what I mean? Uh, let's say we don't wanna do that though. Let's say we want it to be at a different endpoint. Let's, for example, say docs URL equals um, hello world. And then let's get rid of the redoc URL because I haven't used the redoc URL at all. Refresh. And now it will not be found. So now we go to hello world and there are our docs. And now if we go to redoc, I, I don't know if it's redoc save let's see did it refresh i forget which one it is fast api redoc <laughs> mm. redoc so this is the end of the video if you don't necessarily want to stay around for me looking at this you can go ahead and, and click off um i'm going to try one more thing Hey, there we go, it worked without the dash. Okay, so now we have it. We have our information right here. 
Um, we have all the information right here. Now, if we uncomment this, save, let it, re let the server refresh, there, now it goes away. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can include in the configuration here in terms of metadata and the, the docs URL. Um, I encourage you to look some more into it. Uh, yeah, and that's it for this video. Uh, and again, number 32. Um, in the next video, I'm going to touch on static files briefly, testing briefly, and then I'll show you how I can set up debugging in PyCharm, but you might not do that because you might not be using PyCharm, you might be using VS Code anyway. Regardless, I will see you then.